Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw that E has bounced back up towards 26 half. And uh, at this point, heading into the open, we have resistance right there at 26.50 to 29.50. The larger time frame structure is still bearish. Short term, we are bouncing off of an oversold condition and um, off of some pretty decent larger time frame support. So even though the overnight session has been dominated by the buy side, uh, we are trading at uh, some pretty decent resistance here as well. And how the market reacts to 26 half to 29 half and the 18 half to 20 half area will help determine the directional bias on the day. Now, even if we get a breakout above 26 half to 29 half, it doesn't mean that the market has to trend higher from there. Uh, given that the main catalyst this week is the Fed announcement, which is due tomorrow, it's unlikely that we're going to get a big trend day, especially counter to that larger time frame structure. So off the open, 26 half to 29 half is active resistance until broken. And um, technically, sell side can still defend this area and result in a move lower. But even if we break out above 26 half to 29 half, Responsive sellers can still be active at the resistance zones above at 36 to 38.50, uh, 40 half gap, 41 half to 42 half, and finally the 45.75 to 47.75. So as we go higher, uh, sell side can still step in, and um, there's even potential for a failure at one of the resistance zones above. So it's not just that the market can react at those resistance zones, but uh, uh, we can actually get a failure and a reversal back below 2650 or 2950 off of one of the resistance zones above. Now, we don't know in advance which one that's going to be, and that's something that we'll have to gauge in real time. But um, any of these above resistance zones, 363850, or the uh, resistance zones higher, can uh, result in a failure and a move back down. And like I said, until 26 half to 29 half is taken out, it is active resistance, and um, the market has potential to even uh, actually fail at the 26.50 to 29.50. On the downside, a break below 18 half to 20 half is needed in order to uh, shift the short-term control back to the sell side. Right now, you know, we know that on the smaller time frames in the overnight session, the buyers have been dominant. So to change that. Uh, the market would have to start trading below 18 half to 20 half and uh, from there we can get a move into the 09 quarter to 11 quarter initial support buy side can be active there on first test and um, a failure at initial support could take us down into 2075 to 0275 again first test uh, responsive buyers can be active but uh, overall the idea is that the market is more likely to uh, attract sellers as it moves higher and uh, we're probably not going to make a huge move one way or the other uh, but if there is going to be a directional move um, we would still favor that larger time frame bearish structure in the market as opposed to uh, getting aggressively involved on the long side at poor trade location where uh, there can be a failed breakout attempt or uh, just increase odds of chop. So, you know, we'll have to gauge, in the event of an upside move, we'll have to gauge the underlying strength and really make sure that there is some decent uh, momentum behind the move. Uh, otherwise, it'll be prone to failure. So, we do want to be uh, fairly selective again heading into tomorrow. Uh, you know, given that tomorrow is really the major catalyst, uh, you know, today, Again, there, there's just less odds of a big directional move away from the recent balance. And um, for that reason, we just want to be pretty cautious initiating any longs at high prices. Um, the location favors the sell side. And um, like I said, as we go higher, uh, it can actually just continue to attract sellers and eventually even result in a uh, failure and a move back down into uh, yesterday's range or the overnight range. So those are the main ideas heading into the open. The larger time frame structure continues to be bearish. Short term, the buyers are a bit more dominant, but uh, that short term bias can change 
after the open. So uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on the underlying strength and see uh, whether it really supports the idea of continuation higher. And um, again, would rather focus more on short side at these higher prices rather than uh, initiate long at too high of a price. So those are the main ideas. Let's see if the sellers can actually be active and enter off the open, and we'll take it from there.